So I noticed no one has really done a review and uh, unboxing of the Laguna Laser EX. There's the uh, crate dimensions. Uh, we threw the casters on it um, to get it off the, the truck to make it easier to put it in and out of um, my garage until I, I picked it up on a Wednesday and I figured we would start working on it on a Saturday to give me a full day. Um, all these screws are all Phillips screws. They're pretty easy to see. Just take one off at a time. Uh, there was a lot of foam in there. It looked like they used garbage bags and like expanding foam to fill in all the gaps, which was pretty cool. Um, they obviously used a lot of it underneath. So we had to... Uh, Ended up jacking up both sides to be able to, to get all the foam from underneath. That's a quick little view of it right when we first unboxed it. That's the, the air in, the water in, all that stuff. Exhaust, that's the, uh, um, that little circuit breaker there, you need to make sure it's up when you go to plug everything in. And that's this panel here is where all the controls are. So you see we put the 4x4s underneath and jacked it up so we could pull this piece out. And then we had to do the same thing to the other side. There is a lot of foam underneath there. Uh, if you have a forklift, obviously it's a lot easier. You just rip through that foam and pick it all up, put it on the ground. But we're in my garage, so we just decided to use a car jack and some 4x4s. See, like, look at how high it is up. But it's, like, good for them. They packaged it well. So, car jack, 4x4s, push it out, knock off the one end of the, uh, the bottom of the crate, and then we used one of the sides to be able to roll it down to get it off so it wouldn't slam or anything. So this is it all down. And quick little view of the inside. I printed out the instructions to be safe. I knew there were some zip ties and spots to keep it from moving during shipping. Uh, we opened up the side panels. Uh, yeah, there's there's three three keys that three sets of keys that come with it. Two of them for the panels to open up everything, and then there's another set for actually turning on the unit. So it's around here where we find out that it's zip tied to the rail. Oh, oh hold on, it's zip tied. It's zip tied right there to the rail, probably on the other side. Yeah, it was on the other side too. Ooh. So you want to open the other side? Let's see. Yeah, right here, right here. Yeah, just use your side cutters, cut it open. You want to be very careful with that. That's worth like fifteen hundred. And then these are all zip ties that hold everything in place, so nothing moves during shipping. It's just the three yellow ones, and then the couple black on the side. This is a little two box that came with it. Sixteen gig keys example. And that's like the focal length one. If you don't want to use the autofocus. Couple other tools, Allen oh, keys. Nice. And this is what the tube area looks like when you first open it up. A couple bags on stuff, tubes just kind of hanging there. A little detail view. And I just tried to film everything that I could. Because I know when I was looking at this unit, there was nothing that I could find about it at all. There's only a couple videos. And this is the, uh, the laser power supply. And then over on that side, all the electronics. And on this side as well. There's 
So in the middle, there's the, uh, the stepper power supply, the black and green, that's the drivers, the little midget fuse on the right there. Um, you need to make sure that you switch them out to a 15 amp midget fuse that's time delayed. Um, the guy that sold it to me, uh, he told me to make sure that you do that. Uh, your laser just won't work for one day. You need to make sure you change it to the 15 amp. it just plugs up into... Oh, that might be actual thumb drive on. So that might come up to here anyways. That's probably this guy here. This one's the one that you probably want to connect to your computer. Beefy size drivers. Nice. And the front underneath the bed, let's see both the hoses, the black one's like a rubber hose, and then this is the autofocus bed. And the, uh, the silver one, so I messed these two up when I first put it on, and I didn't realize till later after the video. Uh, this tray, that's for catching the small parts when you're just using a blade bed. Um, I'm told that if you use the honeycomb, you just want to use for engraving. If you want to cut out things, you use the blade bed. And these are the supports you need to unscrew to take off the laser. Don't adjust anything else. Um, it comes, all the mirrors come pre-aligned from Laguna. So all you have to do is make sure that you put it all, uh, just the two top supports. And then uh, since they've already redone everything that uh, the Resi laser or Reki, whatever it's called, you don't have to worry about it because they put the right one on. So yeah, make sure you're using any kind of gloves when you're touching the tube. You don't want any fingerprints on it. And that's you want the red cap on the opposite end of the mirrors. And then that little black out that outlet there, you want that facing up and make sure that no bubbles are circulating. And so that one there is the inlet, water inlet. You can take off that panel to make it a lot easier. So this one is wrapped around the post for here. This one is stupid. This is for the actual water, but this one is the actual anode or cathode or whatever, which one it is. I thought this was just a tube. We spent like half an hour looking for this stupid thing. So it'll be laying right in here, looking like it's supposed to go to something else, but it has that on it. That's okay. That's what she said. Yeah, I make sure they go all over as far as you can in. I check it later for leaks, um, but I had no issues. And yeah, I'm not doing that for fun. It's actually in the instructions. The red cap was a bit annoying. Um, you need to make sure that the, the cathode wire is actually lined up. And then, me being impatient, I just want to see it move. When you first turn it on, it will home. And then you can move it around. And if you open the lid, it will still move around, but it won't fire the laser. There's a little reed switch there for a safety. This is the stuff, this is the air assist. 
and then it's got a little barb on the outside it came with the hose that was actually in the same box as the uh, the exhaust fan yeah right here that's the exhaust fan that's the tube for it or that's the tube for the air assist here's the exhaust fan so the one on the side that's the inlet that I'm touching and then the other side on the bottom that's the outlet so it will pull and push the air so i make the mistake of putting the wrong one on i'll show you later this is the chiller it's got two hoses that's the alarm cable to know that there's no uh there's no flow it'll set off alarm it'll stop be start beating and casters the little ones are the ones that unlock and then the big ones lock it. It's pretty easy to move with one person. And setting up the chiller. So the first one is the alarm output. Three pins on one side, four pins on the other side. Just line up the notch. You'll see it on there. Line it up and then thread it in. And then for the chiller to the water, the in goes to the out. So the inlet from the chiller goes to the water out and then the water in goes to the outlet of the chiller it makes sense it's just circulating the water and actually cooling it make sure you check your hoses though i had a slit in mine so i had to go to home depot and get a replacement this is the one that i found that works it was a little tight but it was still able to go on One of the few hoses I was able to get on one-handed. All the rest of them really annoyed me, so I was only able to do one at a time. Obviously, the air goes to the air end. And that just pushes air down the nozzle. Um, keeps the smoke away from where you're actually cutting. Blows parts down. These are the exhausts. Like, I used the wrong one here. Don't use the silver one. You need to use the black one, which is like a rubber. Because where the exhaust fan is, it's like, it's it's pulling air. So all these links will just, like, squish together. And then, yeah, so you see, these need to be the opposite way. I found that out after. And then this is me testing the water. Make sure that there was no leaks. And you got to make sure that the water outlet, which is right there, um, is facing up. Make sure that it prevents bubbles from going through the water or being recirculated. I start hearing this noise. It was just the air compressor really was pushing up against the, uh, the sheet metal. And that's under the honeycomb. Yeah, and that's the blades and then on the honeycomb it's got the the clear the plastic on it just need to make sure you pull it off all sides and this is a little test that i'll link in the description this is a power test it does the power percentage and the speed and so this guy made an awesome site that makes templates for you. And this is it here. I'll link it in the description. He does a power test, an engrave test, and a curve test. I highly suggest you do all three of them before you really start your projects. It'll give you a good baseline. Um, and also, for it exports it to Lightburn. And if you spent this much on a laser, you just buy Lightburn. So I have to flip it horizontal first, and then this is a little test piece that I did with uh, a Star Wars file that I had. Um, I should have finished the rest of the testing first, but I got impatient. As you'll see, there's a lot of charring and everything on it. So yeah, I could have made it much, much better, but it only took three minutes to do all that. And then they pop out and assemble. And this is me testing it on three quarter inch oak plywood. So all you do is bring it down to where you want it to start from and you want to press origin. 
That's very important. And then on light burn, you'll have to make sure you start from the user origin, or else you're just going to have a whole bunch of headaches. And you click send. As long as it's plugged in, that will send whatever file you're working on over to the laser. So I just escape, and then you hit file, and then it's usually the first one on the top. You just hit enter. And you can press frame if you want to to see what boundary it is, but I already know it's just a small file, so I hit go. And then this is like, I think it's 5 millimeters a second at 100% power. Um, but those are the, uh, you know, the speeds and feeds that I, I found to work really well after doing the test. The other thing is you need to make sure that the max power on the machine, there's a button for max power, don't set it to anything higher than 65%. Because you want to make sure that you're watching the ammeter there and that it never goes over 30 milliamps. So 100% in light burn only means 65% on on the actual laser and you want to keep it that way so that you're, you're consistent and you, if you go over 30 milliamps, um, then the life of the tube is going to go drastically down. So, yeah, so if uh, I'm going to do another video of uh, just general um, setup files and everything. So if you have any questions, or you just want to make a comment, subscribe, that kind of stuff, I'll do a bunch of videos on this laser. All right, thanks for listening. Bye.